Welcome to Stacks.gh and welcome to our session on employment income taxation or the taxation of income from employment. This is a very dear topic to the hearts of examiners as I'm here to see a major tax exam that has not examined this topic in one way or the other. It's very crucial, it's very important if you want to pass the tax exam. For those who are watching for general knowledge, this is also a very key part of our understanding of income taxation. Don't forget that in our introductory videos, we said there are basically three main streams of income. It's either income from employment, income from business, or income from an investment, right? So we are looking at employment income today. We'll try to break this into a number of parts to facilitate your consumption, make it easy for you to follow. So this is part one of our series. Let's define unemployment. And it's important, as always, on the far right, you see the reference to the part of the legislation. So those who are studying this for a law paper, there's a session of the law um, that you, you find this definition in. So the Income Tax Act defines unemployment to mean a position of an individual in the employ of another person a position of an individual as a manager of an entity other than as a partner of a partnership. So it means technically, if you are a partner of a partnership, that is not a typical employer-employee relationship. A position of an individual entitling that individual to a fixed or ascertainable pay in respect of services performed, and then a public office held by an individual. So any of these four qualify as employment. So anytime we use the word employment, it could mean any of these um, any of these definitions. It's important to understand this because it is crucial to know what qualifies as an employer-employee relationship. Is there an employment? If there is, does it fall under the the scope of employment income under Act 896? This is a very important exercise to always undertake. Is there an employment in the first place? And if yes, that's when we begin to look at the specific rules governing employment taxation. The next we'll look at is the applicable tax rates. We'll need this later, but I want to show you what is ahead of you. Basically, this is the tax table. Some people call it the graduated tax rate, but what the law calls it is the individual income tax rate or the personal income tax rate for resident individuals. You can see it's in separate tax bands. So if you look at the bottom, unlike non-resident individuals who have a flat income tax rate of 25%, if you're a resident person, we take your income through different layers to tax you. So we start from 0% or the nil or the free tax band, which is an annual income of 3,828 Ghana cities. Um, if that's all you earn for the whole year, you don't pay tax. This is usually computed with reference to the national daily minimum wage um, on an annualized basis. And it goes all the way up to 30% if you earn more than 240,000 Ghana cities for the whole year. We'll look at this um, when we begin to do the computational elements subsequently. So just know this is, how we, this is the tax rate we use to compute the income tax for resident individuals. And if you watched our income tax basic concepts video, you would have understood the difference between a resident individual and a non-resident individual. Now that we know what rates are applicable, how does the Income Tax Act define employment income? So the Income Tax Act says income, income of an individual from an employment for a year of assessment is the gains and profits of that individual from the employment for the year or a part of the year. So if you do, if you have an employment contract, which is not up to a full year, you still fall under this. It must not necessarily be a full, a full year's worth of employment. Also, it says it is the gains and profits you make from that employment. There are so many questions um, in social media asking things like, uh, my, employ my employer gave me X, Y, Z, or my employer gave me A, B, C, is it taxable? The base point you need to know is once it is a gain or a profit you made from the employment, it is taxable. 
unless the law has specifically mentioned somewhere that that item is not taxable so someone will ask oh my employer gave me this item is it taxable or my employer pays my children's school fees for me is it taxable the question you should ask yourself is is it a gain and is it a gain or profits from an employment if yes you move on to step two is that item specifically exempted from income tax if no then you should pay tax on that item very simple but to allow us to understand how to determine what's employment income the law gives us some guidance this is not an exhaustive list but it tells us or it tries to guide us on what may be included or what should be included in determining employment income so the law says anyone who is ascertaining the profits and gains of an individual from an employment for a year or for a part of the year shall include the following First is salary, wages, leave pay, fees, commission, and gratuity. So that is why we all know salaries are taxable, obviously. Right? So your salaries, your wages, your leave pay, fees, commissions, gratuities, the law says should be added to employment income. The next is overtime pay and bonuses as provided by regulations. And regulations here, the law refers to the income tax regulations of 2016 LI 2244. LI2244 has clear provisions on how to tax overtime and how to tax bonus. The next is personal allowances. And look at the word in the law used here. It said including. It means the list is not exhaustive. Take note. There are some people who argue that the law said personal allowances and they mentioned cost of living allowance, subsistence, rent, entertainment, or travel. So some people say if my company pays me risk allowance or my company pays me a special clothing allowance then it's not taxable because it wasn't mentioned here take note the law said personal allowances are taxable this includes he was given examples the law was given examples it wasn't telling you personal allowances that are the following he said personal allowances that include the following so if your company pays you a cost of living allowance subsistence allowance rent allowance entertainment allowance, travel allowance, and other personal allowances, they are all taxable. Take note. A discharge or a reimbursement of an expense incurred by an individual or an associate of that individual. You incur an expense, your employer reimburses you, that amount should be included in your income. There is an exception. We'll look at it when we get to the amount to be excluded. But for now, this is a general rule. If it is not under that exception I'll talk about, in the next minute or so take note that this should be included in determining employment income the next is a payment made for the individual's agreement to conditions of the employment all this means is if within your employment contract there is any other payment that must be made by way of specific specification in your contract or employment contract then you need to add that payment to the amount to be taxed still an amount to be included it says, subject to the rules on the taxation of retirement funds, any retirement contribution made to a retirement fund on behalf of an employee and a retirement payment received in respect of unemployment should be included. But like we are saying, subject to the rules of taxation of retirement funds. We have a session after this on pensions or taxation, tax rules relating to pensions, pension accounting, um, the whole tier one, tier two, tier three structure in Ghana. We'll look at that separately. But for now, just know that to some extent, within some limits, you may have to include some portion of your pension in determining employment income. The next is other payments, including gifts that you receive in respect of unemployment. So let's say you are an employee, and as part of your job, someone gives you a gift. That gift must be added to your employment income and tax. The typical example is if you're a waitress and you are at the restaurant and someone comes to the restaurant and you are they, they are so, so impressed by your services and they give you a tip. That tip is a gift you received as part of your employment. You only got it because you work at that restaurant. If you were not a waitress, you wouldn't have received that gift. So by extension, we say that tip is a gain or a profit from employment so you must add that gift to your employment income and get it taxed accordingly the next is other amounts that the law requires you to include under part three of the acts we'll get we'll, we'll talk about that in subsequent sessions but just know that the law requires 
certain possible other items to be included as employment income. The next is any other allowance or benefits paid in cash or given in kind if they are derived by the individual during the year from the employment. So it's saying here the law is trying to cover any other possible thing that was not covered above. It's saying any other allowance or benefits that was paid to you in cash or given to you in kind. So let's say your employer gave you a gift hamper. They either pay to you in cash or they gave it to you in kind. The company gave you a company car. It's in kind, right? All of these benefits, as long as you derived it during the year from your job, then it's taxable. It's, it's supposed to be added to your employment income. So the, the guiding rule is, but for your job, would you have received that benefit? That's the guiding rule. If the answer is no, then it's a gain of profit. So what we are saying here is if, let's say, because you work at a mining company, you have a company card to use. If you want to know whether or not it's a gain or profit from employment, ask yourself, if you're working in a supermarket, would you have received that car? No. The supermarket worker does not get that benefit. So you enjoying the car, we must find a way to tax you on the benefit you are getting from employment, which is the car the company gave you. Now that we know what we need to include, it's time to look at the things to exclude. I will emphasize that it's important to actually remember more the things to exclude and the things to include, because it's easy to remember how to include include everything unless it's supposed to be excluded right so here what things does the law clearly say we should exclude from employment income determination the first is saying that any exemption under section 7 which is exempt amount so if you watched our immediately preceding section which is the final part of um, income tax basic principles like i think that's part three of or the third video in the series on basic principles of income tax we covered extensively all the exempt items or exempt amount so what we are saying is any amount that's exempt there should be exempt from your employment income if it has a link or it relates to your employment income the next is a final withholding payment once again if you watched our principles of income tax series we explained a final withholding payment for your benefit in case you've not watched that in summary please go and watch that but in summary a final withholding payment is any payment that has already satisfied fully all its income tax liability at a point payment was made so there's no other tax liability arising from that income amount we'll discuss this into further details in the session on withholding taxes the next item that should be excluded take note so far Section 7 exemptions are not to be added to employment income. Final withholding payments are also not to be added to employment income. The next is a discharge or reimbursement of an expense incurred by an individual on behalf of the employer of that individual that serves the proper business purpose of the employer. So let's say you go out of the office, you go and buy things for the company's use, its proper business purpose of the company. You come back to the office, you tell your boss, I spent 1,000 CDs to buy ABC, these are the receipts. And then the company pays you back, the company reimburses you with that amount of money. The law is saying it is not income you made. You have already incurred the expense. That expense was related to a proper business purpose of your company. All your employer is doing is simply giving you the money back. Right? So it is not to be included in your income from employment. The next is a discharge or reimbursement of the dental, medical, or health insurance expenses of an individual, where the benefit is available to each full-time employee on equal terms. This principle or this concept is very crucial. Why? It has a number of points you need to remember. Where your employer discharges or reimburses you with dental expenses, medical expenses, or health insurance expenses, it may be ex exempt from your income tax or excluded from your income tax determination on the condition that every full-time employee who works in your company gets this benefit. So in a case where there is discrimination or segregation, let's say if you're a junior staff, you don't get it. If you're a senior staff, then you get it. Then this benefit doesn't apply. This exemption doesn't apply. It only applies where everybody 
gets this benefit on an equal basis as long as they are full-time employees so take notes that doesn't apply to contract staff they are they are even full-time employees so let's say people who are part-time staff and all of that but remember it must be available to each full-time employee on an equal basis like, very important to remember also what should be excluded is a payment providing passage of the individual to or from ghana in respect of their first employment by the employer or their termination of the employment where three conditions one they are recruited or engaged outside ghana they are in ghana solely for the purpose of serving the employer and finally they are not a resident of ghana this particular point i've seen it being tested by the icag and citg they ask a question they ask you to provide the points that will make um, that will satisfy this exam so please remember that all the items here they can pick anything and then ask you to explain or give the points that will make you qualify what does this point mean what is passage let's say in simple terms passage is cost of travel in basic terms right if a company in ghana recruits an expatriate employee from which country from france to come and help with a project in ghana we are saying that any payment that provides passage to that person that provides transportation costs so maybe the person's air ticket and all other related expenses that brought them into ghana that any any amount relating to their travel cost to ghana is to be excluded from their income tax because or, or if they meet a number of conditions the first is if they are recruited or engaged outside ghana it means they must not be in ghana when the recruitment was happening they must be outside ghana they must be recruited outside ghana number two is they are only coming to ghana just for the purpose of serving this company they are not here to do their own personal business or open a small shop or have fun have holidays in ghana they are here just to do this particular employment and the final point is they are not residents of ghana or they're not a resident person in ghana once these three conditions are met remember the law says providing passage to the person to or from ghana so it covers any cost that brings them to ghana and any cost that takes them back to their home country so take you note know, their travel cost tickets and all associated costs i expect visa costs and all of those things um, to be a part of this this should not be included in the employment income determination of the employee the next which is very interesting is a provision of accommodation by an employer carrying on a timber mining building construction farming business or petroleum operations to that person at a place or site where the field operation of the business is carried on what we are saying here is remember i said in the previous section on what amounts were to be included i said if your employer gives you any gain or profit right which in this case would have been the company gave you company house to live in it's taxable we are saying if the company gives you accommodation that's the first step second step the company is either a timber company it's either a mining company it's either a building company it's either a construction company it's either a farming business or a petroleum operation or a petroleum operating company and they give you accommodation on the site of the business then that accommodation is exempt i'll explain I, i'll explain shortly um, what this means when we get to um, the, or the breakdown for what the law means when they say on the place of site or business but take it from here that where you are an employee of any of these companies timber mining building construction farming or petroleum and you are given company accommodation but it is on the site so you're on the mine site you are on the construction site we don't include this benefit in taxing you and i think the logic is we've taken you from your family you are living on the company sites all the risk all the hazard all the noise you know what just keep this benefit won't tax you on it but if we've given you accommodation it's in an estate with all the air conditions and all of that then please that is taxable the next is any payments made to employees on a non-discriminatory basis 
and which by reason of the size, type, and frequency of the payment are unreasonable or administratively impracticable for the employer to account for or to allocate an individual is exempt. So let's say you are you work in a company where the, um, the employer has, let's say, 100,000 employees and the employer provides lunch to everybody. And you know the lunch is a benefit from unemployment, right? So ordinarily, that lunch should be taxable because if you're not working in that company, you don't get free lunch. Think about it that way. Once you get free lunch at work, all things being equal, we should find a way to value the lunch and tax you. But this exemption is saying that any amount that everybody in the company gets, that's why we say non-discriminatory basis. So once you work in the company, you get free lunch. But we are saying if by reason of the size, type and frequency, it's unreasonable or administratively impracticable to allocate to each individual, then it's not taxable. What we mean is for 100,000 employees, everybody getting their plates of rice, are you now going to calculate that this person took rice and egg? This person took rice and chicken. So you want to calculate and then allocate to the person on a monthly basis. The, the law is saying, if you think it's too much work to do that breakdown, then let it fly, let it go. And the final thing is redundancy pay. If you are paid any amount of money because you are made redundant and you lost your job as a result, let's say there was a restructuring in the company, there was a change in law, there was a change in methodology that rendered you redundant, meaning you were not needed at your job again, and your company paid you off as you were going, that redundancy pay is exempt. Once again, take note that this is the law once again trying to be merciful. You've lost your job, you are going home, take the money, why should I tax you, right? Just go enjoy and we hope you get a new job later that's the whole rationale now that we know what is to be included we know what is to be excluded let's look at the scope of coverage for employment income what we are saying is that for the purpose of determining employment income an amount allowance of benefits is a gain or profit from employment if the amount allowance of benefits is provided under three conditions if it's provided by the employer an associate of the employer, a third party of the employer, under an arrangement with the employer or his associate, is employment income. What this means is, it doesn't matter if the employer is paying you directly. If the employer's sister company is doing the payment to you, or if an unrelated party under an arrangement with the employer is making the payment to you, it is still employment income as long as it relates to your job. So companies that may try to be smart and say, well, you work for me, but I don't pay you. Someone else does the payment. The law is saying, we don't care who does the payment. As long as it relates to this job, it's employment income, we'll tax you on it. The next is, if the benefit is provided to you, the employee, or your associate, it's still employment income. So let's say you watching this video, you say, you know what? My employer, don't pay my salary, pay it to my friend, right? And because of that, you say because it wasn't paid into your bank account by your friend's bank account, it, it should be exempt. No, the law is saying that whether we paid it to you or your associate, it is still your job, it is still your employment, so we include it in your employment income. And the final one is, we don't care whether it relates to past employment, present employment, or even future employment, we'll still include it in your employment income and tax you accordingly. The next... Um, Section will look at the requirement for an employer to withhold tax. We are saying here that an employer is required to withhold tax when they make payments for an amount to be included in your employment income. What we are saying here is every month when an employer makes payments to you, they need to take a certain portion of the money aside and pay to the government, which what people popularly refer to as a PAYE system or the pay as you earn system. The government doesn't want to wait and say, bring the money at the end of the year. We need money to construct roads. We need money to do the one district, one factory. We need one man. We need more money to build um, dams and all of these government intervention projects. We need money for free SHS and all of those um, government policies. So on a monthly basis, when your employer makes payment to you, your employer is required to withhold tax and then remit this money to the GR. As we find out when we get to compliance, you realize that it is the employer's duty 
to make payments to the GRA by the 15th day of the subsequent month and then file returns on that same date. Right? So the employer is supposed to withhold tax when they make payments to an employee. And the final bullet here is saying the obligation of the employer to withhold tax is not reduced when extinguished simply because the employer has a right or is under an obligation to deduct and withhold any other amount. So we don't care that, let's say in some companies, um, the employer, there's an arrangement where you probably you guys are under a welfare scheme. So maybe company welfare, staff welfare, and we deduct 260 every month from the salary. The law is saying that we don't care that there's an obligation or an arrangement for the employer to deduct something else. We will take our tax. So deduct our tax. We don't care what else you deduct. That's what this point is saying. The next is, if any other law provides that the income of an employee from employment shall not be reduced or subject to attachment. So we don't care what another law says, right? Unless it is explicitly exempt under the Income Tax Act, which is the taxing jurisdiction or the taxing legislation, sorry, for income tax, then we will apply the income tax law. We don't care what another act is saying. The next point here is still on employers required to withhold tax. We are seeing this from the income tax regulations, LI 2244. We are seeing an employer is required to withhold tax when they make qualifying cash payments to an employee during the year. And I've said that, and this is supposed to meet the employment tax liability of the employee. Imagine the GRA was leaving it up to you and I to come and account for our employment income tax every month. Most of us will not do it, right? Because Technically, nobody really enjoys paying tax, if you be honest, right? Um, so the point I'm making here is, even though it is your income that you are making, even though it is your tax, we are trust or we are entrusting that responsibility into the hands of the employer to, before they give your money to you, before they credit your bank account, that they withhold your tax and come and pay to GRI. That's what we are saying. And this should satisfy the employee's tax liability for the month or year, whichever it relates to. Then we are seeing that an employer is required to withhold tax in accordance with section 114, which we just looked at in the previous slide, and the rest um, regulations. If the employer is resident in Ghana or is a non-resident employer who has a Ghanaian permanent establishment, right? We've explained permanent establishments in our income tax basic concepts video. We'll go into further details on or in our video on international taxes. Let's look at probably what you find very interesting, non-resident public entertainers. So your Davidos, your, what are their names? Um, Davido, Burner Boy, um, Show My Jersey, all these international acts, right? Um, these are the musicians, but I also cover sportsmen, as we'll see very soon, right? They're saying that a non-resident public entertainer who renders a service in Ghana shall, for tax purposes, be treated as an employee of the promoter of the event in respect of which that public entertainer rendered the service. We are saying also that a person who makes payment to a public entertainer for a service rendered by that entertainer shall, for tax purposes, be treated as the employer of that entertainer and the payment made to the public entertainer shall be treated as income derived by that entertainer from employment and in accordance with the law we will withhold tax at the non-resident rate of 25 percent then we are saying that on the date the employer makes payments the employer should deduct withholding tax when they pay the public entertainer who is the public entertainer within the law it says a stage artist a motion a motion picture artist a radio artist a musician, a sportsman or sportswoman, including any athlete, footballer or boxer. So if for any reason um, Lionel Messi comes to Ghana, I don't think it will ever happen, but let's say Leo Messi comes to Ghana to play an, an exhibition uh, match in Ghana and he makes income in Ghana. What the law is saying is Messi will be deemed to have exercised unemployment in Ghana and whoever brought him to Ghana, if it's a GFA, if it's um, as another sports agency in Ghana, they'll be deemed to be Messi's employer. Messi will be an employee for the purpose of this um, exhibition match in Ghana. And any amount Messi earns in Ghana will be liable to income tax at 25%. Same applies 
if we bring Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury to have their um, heavyweight boxing unification match um, fight in Ghana and the end in coming Ghana, whichever boxing sanctioned by a body brought them to Ghana to fight in Ghana, I know it won't happen in Ghana, it's impossible, but whichever sanctioning body brought them here to fight in Ghana will be deemed to be the employer. Then the boxers, which is Joshua and Fury, will be deemed to be the employees. And whatever they earn will be deemed to be income from an employment exercise in Ghana. So we'll pause here and then we'll continue the subsequent points um, in the next session. Don't forget to share this video and smash the like button. I'll catch you shortly. <music>